Today's topic will cover timers and counters. The Fanuc Ladder Logic has multiple types of timers and counters that can be used in it. This is a description of some of these function statements. You will see how they are configured, used in a ladder program to cause alarms, and then reverse engineer the alarms to fix the problem. At the end of this lab, you will be able to identify the various types of timers and counters used in the ladder and get a thorough understanding on how they are used. There are basically two types of timers and counters used on the FANUC controls. These are variable and fixed. Variable means that you can easily adjust the values. This is done by going to the timer or counter screens and inputting a new value. Fixed means that the timer or counter value is hard coded into the ladder. In order to adjust these, you will need to edit the ladder. Let's start with timers. Timers are a function statement in a PMC. Like all function statements, each type of timer is given a unique subnumber. The ones we will cover today will include sub 3, your variable timers, sub 24, fixed on delay timers, sub 77, fixed off delay timers, and sub 54, which are also variable timers. The availability of these timers will depend upon the model control that you are using and the type of FANUC ladder logic that is in it. Each of these timer function statements uses a contact known as an action command or ACT to start the operation. Basically, this gets the timer to start timing. The actual time value can deviate depending upon the scan time of the ladder. Timers in level 1 of a ladder will be more accurate. Level 2 timers may deviate due to the scan sequence. Like many function statements, there are settings that determine how it will be used. Let's start with the sub 3 timer and see how it works. In the ladder logic, you will find a sub 3 timer drawn as shown. Now a sub 3 timer, also known as a TMR timer, is a variable timer. You can set a value for the timer in the timer settings page found in the PMC maintenance screens. In this case, the time is set to 5 seconds. Note that the value is in milliseconds. Please pay close attention to the timer number. This is where you will locate the settings for this timer. Do not confuse it with the timer address. Doing so will have you setting the wrong value. This will screw up the machine. You will see that certain timers have a preset accuracy level. For instance, timer number 2 has a preset accuracy of 48 milliseconds. If I try to enter a value between 1 and 47, it will not accept it. The minimum value that I can put in is 48. FANUC controls will round this value off to the nearest accuracy it can accept. For instance, my data sheet says I'm supposed to enter a value of 100 milliseconds into a timer. But when I enter the value, it changes to 96 milliseconds. The reason is that this timer has an accuracy of 48 milliseconds. It will round the number down to the nearest value it can work with. Don't worry about this. That's the way it's supposed to work. Timers 1 through 8 are set to 48 milliseconds. Timers above this are set to 8 millisecond increments. On new style controls, you are now able to change the accuracy level of the timers. This is done with the accuracy soft key. I don't recommend doing this on any preset timers. Once again, this will screw up your machine. So I've got the time value for timer number 10 set to 5 seconds. Yeah, it's in milliseconds. Each timer is given a unique number that identifies it. These numbers should not be duplicated. Unfortunately, there is no way to search for this number in the ladder. If you have a hard copy of the ladder cross-reference, it will be listed showing the network number. You can search the network number to locate the timer in the ladder. Now the output coil shown here will turn on when the timer has reached the value set in the previous screen. It will stay on as long as the action command remains active. If this contact goes low for even one scan of the ladder, the timer output will turn off and the process will start all over again. Variable timers can be used for items such as lube pump on and off time, indexer rotation over time, door open, close over time, or other functions. The sub 24 function 
is known as a TMRB timer. This is a fixed timer. This means that you can't modify the timer value. This timer behaves just like the TMR variable timer. This timer does not have an accuracy level and can be set up to around 546 minutes. When the ACT signal command goes high, the timer will begin to time out. Once it's timed out, it will turn on the output. This output will stay on as long as the action command signal is high. If ACT goes low for even one scan of the ladder, the output will turn off and the process starts over again. A good example for the use of a fixed timer will be something such as the amount of time it takes the tool changer to complete its operation. Typically, you shouldn't need to alter the value from the one set by the machine tool builder. Like the variable timers, each TMRB timer is given a unique number. These should not be duplicated in the ladder. The next timer I'm going to talk about is the Sub-77 Fixed Off Delay Timer. Now this is called a TMRBF timer. It works a little bit different than the other timers. In this case, the output turns on as soon as the action command goes high. When the ACT command goes low, the output will stay on for the time shown here. Basically, this is an off delay timer. This is fairly new to the FANUC. Up until this time, all timers were on delay. TMRBF and TMRB timers share the same timer numbering system. Be sure to use a unique number for each. The time values can be set up to 546 minutes. Now the Sub-54 timer is a little bit fancier. This is a TMRC timer. Let's see how this one works. Like the variable timer, Sub-3, this timer allows you to adjust the time before the output turns on. The difference is that the time value is stored to an address instead of the timer table. Typically, this is done with a data address in the data tables. Like the Sub-3 timer, this timer also has an accuracy or increment level. This is set in the first line. The setting shown here will set the increment level for this timer. Generally, a setting of zero is used to establish this as an eight millisecond timer. Other settings can be used. The address that holds the time value is input on line two. This is typically a data address. Note that this field will take two bytes of data. This means that if you set the starting address at D100, it will take addresses D100 and D101 to hold the timer value. This sub-54 statement is set up for an 8 millisecond accuracy. A setting of 3000 into D100 will produce a time value of 24 seconds. 8 times 3000 milliseconds equals 24 seconds. If I change the accuracy setting to a 3, this will give me an increment of 10 seconds. By setting D100 to a 2, I'll end up with a 20 second timer. Timer ranges can be set from 8 milliseconds up to approximately 546 hours. That's a lot of time. Line 3 is the starting address where the actual counting will occur. This address will take up to 4 consecutive bytes of data. So a setting of R700 will use the addresses R700 through R703. These addresses must not be used in a ladder for any other purpose. Please note that, unlike the other timers we discussed, there are no timer numbers associated with the Sub-54. This ends my description of the basic timers used on a FANUC control. Now it's time to talk about counters. We will discuss three basic counters. There are the CTR sub-5 variable counter, the CTRB sub-56 fixed counter, and the CTRC sub-55 variable counter. Counters, like the timers, are triggered by an action command. Every time that the ACT signal transitions high, it will increment the counter value by one. Once the incremented value is equal to or greater than the preset value, the counter will turn on an output. 
The counters used in the FANUC ladder are known as ring counters. This means that after the preset value has been reached and the output turns on, an additional action statement will result in the counter starting over again. Just like the TMR sub 3 timer, the CTR sub 5 counter can be set in the PMC maintenance page found under counters. You can change the preset and current values here for the sub 5 counters. As I mentioned before, be careful not to use the counter address. Only work with the counter numbers when making changes. This will really screw up your machine if you don't. Also, like timers, you can do an operation on the page that will allow you to search for a counter number. In addition, the switch button will switch you back and forth between the counter values and any description that the machine tool builder may have put in. Counters like timers are assigned a unique number that identifies the counter. There are a couple of additional settings that need to be made for a counter. These involve CNO, up, down, and reset input. Let's talk about these. The contact labeled CNO is used to establish where we start counting. Do we start at zero or start at one? If I'm counting something such as a turret location, I want to start at one. If I wish to count the number of times a tool has been used, I would start at zero. If I set the CNO contact low, the counter starts at zero. If I set the CNO contact high, the counter starts at one. This is typically set with a constant on or a constant off address. A setup such as this would produce an always on signal. I can then use the coil as a normally opened or a normally closed contact on CNO. A number of machine tool builders make use of a special address provided by FANUC in the ladder for this purpose. This is the R9091 address. R9091 bit 0 is always off. R9091 bit 1 is always on. There are no coils for these contacts. Just as a side note, FANUC has started to switch these addresses over to a new address. This is the Z address. R9091 bit 0 can be shown as Z91 bit 0 and R9091 bit 1 can be shown as Z91 bit 1. The next setting we're going to look at is the up down input. This isn't overly complicated. Does the counter count up to the preset value and turn on an output or does it count down from the preset value and turn on the output? By setting up down input low the counter becomes an up counter. By setting it high, it becomes a down counter. This is usually handled in the same manner as a CNO input. A constant is typically assigned, although you can do almost anything you want in the latter by simply changing some contacts. Now the last setting is the reset input. This is fairly simple. When this input goes high, even for one scan of the ladder, it will reset the counter back to the beginning so that it starts over. As an example, I can set this contact to F1.1. This is the reset signal from the CNC. When someone presses the reset button, it will activate this input and reset the counter. The next counter we're going to discuss is the fixed counter. All the settings on this counter behave just like the CTR counter. The difference is that the preset count value is hard-coded into the ladder. This is comparable to the difference between the variable timer TMR and the fixed timer TMRB. You can't change the value unless you edit the ladder. The last counter we're going to talk about today is the CTRC, the sub-55. This is similar to the TMRC timer. The preset value for this counter is assigned to an address instead of having a constant value. The value in this address is often set in the data tables. For instance, by setting a value of 12 in data address D302, the counter is set to 12. All of the settings are the same as we discussed previously. This is a simple explanation of some of the timers and counters used on a FANUC control.